Hello, uh, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So this is the story of me upgrading my sword. Yeah, so this raises a number of questions probably is why has he got a sword? Uh, why does he want an upgrade? You know, etc, etc. So um, the reason I want a sword is because um, when I was at school, I, I didn't like those sports where everybody bashed into each other and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I had an option to take sword fencing. So I took up sword fencing as a sport, uh, not realizing actually it kills you. Well, not uh, not literally, but it was hard work. Um, so yeah, it wasn't actually a soft touch, soft, soft touch. And um, but I did enjoy it, and and I had a little advantage: tall, thin, um, and left-handed. Yeah, so I had an advantage. And uh, about 20 odd years ago, I bought um, a sword because I like to have a little play, pull it out, do a few lunges, a few, you know, lily, lily whatever. Anyway, so I, that's why I bought a sword originally. So um, anyway, the sword I bit, bought was a bit crap. So I bought an upgrade. I, we were went to an antiques place in Findon and um, my wife saw this sword and she went, oh, look at this one. And I had a look at it and I went, oh, that's, that's much nicer than what I've got. And um, so she said, it can be your birthday present if you want, even though it's a couple of months away. Yeah, I'm having it. So I've got this. I'm not going to collect swords. I'm going to have, I'll get rid of the other one. Um, it's not as good. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my swords out with the extension, lay them out, and I'll I'll show you why the two ways in which one is better than the other. Um, one I bought is better as a weapon. If you're going to be going out killing people, it's it's better as a weapon. But also, it's a better better quality sword as well. So, um, and I'll I'll show you all of that and um, show you what I bought. So here are my two swords. Um, this is my old sword and this is my new sword. Um, you can immediately see this one's got more gubbins with it. So you've got the scabbard, you've got this bit which is called the frog, which um, is the bit you use to attach the scabbard to the belt and I've got the belt. And the leather's in reasonable condition for my frog. Uh, this one You've only got the scabbard and the frog. Um, and yeah, the frog's a bit AF in places, so, and the leather's just a bit more dried out. Maybe I should wax it or something before, polish it before I try and sell it. But anyway, you can also see uh, this, this new sword is longer than the old one. Um, they are actually, they kind of look similar-ish, but they have completely different philosophies behind them. So this is a 1895 British infantry pattern sword, and this is a this is an artillery officer's sword, um, and how can I say? I don't know the exact date of it, of the pattern, but it's going to be from the first half of the 19th century. I I, I have a book, and I'll show you why I think that, um, and. So yeah, if you look at the quality of the engraving on it, yeah, so that it's made by Wilkinson's in London. It's got the name of the officer on it, and you can see it's got a little gun carriage or gun there, um, and the crown and crest and everything, royal crest, and on the other side it says Royal Artillery, um, and then look at that, it's lovely isn't it, really well made quality piece of work. Let me show you, and look at the basket hilt here, this is cast. And then it's covered in nickel because they hadn't invented chrome yet. 
So yeah. this would be where the sword knot would be. There would be like a thing that strip of leather that come off with a knot on the end that would hang off there. Um, the knot has broken off, but um, yeah, you've got the remains of the sword knot. And then, oh yeah, and this sword has also got what's known as a quillion, this bit here, which um, you can actually use to try and capture someone else's, the end of someone else's sword and push it away. Um, it's not a very big quillion on, on sort of like medieval rapiers, they're big ones that come out, but it's got one, and it also stops the sword from someone else's sword sliding down and coming onto your hand. That's the idea of, you know, slide down the sword and chop into your wrist, you don't want that. Then this is the other one. So the, the hilt is just a, a basically a plate that's been pierced and engraved a little bit. Um, there's no quillion, it's just got this piece turned up here on the end of the hilt plate. Um, the other thing is, you see this little star here? There's nothing in the middle of it. Let me show you this one here. It's got a little brass, I don't know what you call that, button, yes. This is a proof button for the um, sword. It means that this sword has been tested for strength, etc. Um, this sword hasn't. It's just got a little star there, but there's no proof button in it. So there's no evidence that it's ever been tested. And I think somewhere on it, can I find it? It does have a minor crack in the blade. So, yeah, this one is more of a parade ground sword, really. I mean, you could kill someone with this. Um, probably quite easily. Um, but yeah, it is more of a parade ground. Oh, sorry about that. That's my clock going off there. What else can I tell you about them? So yeah, the handle that you grip is made out of shark skin. And this handle on this one, because I'm quite tall, I've got bigger hands, handle, you're supposed to hold it like this, yeah? Um, with your thumb on this flat piece here. And with it, my hand can go fit in quite nicely and the, the hilt's not resting on the back of my hand. On the other one, it's a little bit shorter and it does. So yeah, that's not quite so good if you're a big person. Although if you're a big person, this is a slightly heavier sword. Um, so yeah. The other thing about this sword is there was a change in philosophy. Um, during the Boer War, I'd like to point out I made a mistake at this point. I said Boer War and I meant the Crimean War. So yeah, sorry about that. Um, they were finding that swords like this, they were, because it's got a sharp blade here, um, you couldn't cut through um, a, ro uh, a Russian great coat with this. It, you, they would hack at people and um, it would hurt them, but it wouldn't chop them open. So, um, because their uniforms were so thick. So the philosophy went to this kind of sword, which was a bit lighter, and it's just the point. There's no blade. You could hit somebody with it, but there's no blade there. You know, I'm quite happy to do that. I wouldn't do it with the other one because I'd chop my thumb open. Um, <clears throat> and you just, so this sword is just designed to stab through people, and it will do that. Um, at the other end of the sword, you've got this bit here. So if someone gets inside your sword, this little knob here is called a skull breaker, and you would basically jam that into people, and you'd have the whole weight of the whole bar of the sword going into them with that. That would hurt you a lot. Even if you didn't hit them on the head with it, if you hit them anywhere with that, like that, it would hurt a lot. So, yeah, so this one has got a very sharp blade. Um, so you could swing it at people and chop them open, um, as well as a very sharp point as well. And the back of the blade at, at the end is sharp as well, so it will actually pierce people more easily. The other thing about this is that 
with that one, if someone grabs hold of your blade, it's going to be difficult to get them off. It's not going to cut their hand open. Anybody grabbing the end of, end of this blade um, is going to lose their fingers. So, yeah, it is a better weapon, um, but it's proof. So it's actually a weapon that works. You know, it won't break on you like that one might. As I said, it's got a small crack in it somewhere. Um, so, yeah, so this is a much superior thing. Um, make wise i think this was probably made um it just says gri there's no so it's george um so it could be george the fifth or george the sixth whereas this one somewhere has a let's see what it says all entangled up and i think it's that's a gvr which is george the fifth so have a feeling because that's such poor quality that was churned i suspect that was churned out during world war ii whereas this one um it's been proved it's made in london i think it, well it's george v so it's an interwar really sword probably so it's a little bit so it's an earlier design but may and probably made you know 10 20 years earlier than than that one um but yeah this is a for me, if I was going to play around, do a bit of thing, it sits nicer in the hand because it's got a longer handle. Um, if you were ever going to do a duel, you know, I'm practiced. <laughs> and this one is more likely to kill you than the other one because you can, you can swing over arm as well as going with the point. But yeah, so that's the difference between the two swords. And that's why this one is a, an upgrade. I mean, that is a really solid piece. You can also hit people with the, it won't hurt them as much as the thing, but you can actually hit people with this. See, that's not gonna be as effective because it is just a big round plate. So it's hitting with something that's quite flat um, and it doesn't have the same weight as that does. So, um, so yeah, um, you can kill, kill people with this still, but it's, it's not, because it's not proofed, I wouldn't want to go into battle with it. Um, it would, there's a, a chance that it could snap. And I said, I have seen a crack on this, but I can't, oh, there he is, look. Can you see? There's a small crack, just there. Yeah. If you're stabbing someone, it will probably work fine. If you're hitting them, it will probably snap open. So yeah. Um, so you can't even, you know, hurt somebody, intentionally hurt them just by whacking them with it as a, as a bar, um, because it is a good chance it was going to break and leave you with, you know, a third of your sword. So there you go. Those are the two swords. I will, um, show you, um, what I've got in my book. So this is my book, uh, The World Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of Swords and Sabres by Harvey J.S. Withers. It cost me four ninety nine. dollars Yeah. And um, so here we go. This is the, um, my old sword, British Infantry Officer's Sword, 1895 pattern. Here it is. It's exactly the same as the one. The piercing on the, on the hilt here, the basket hilt, is um, different because that's um, got the, um, it says GRI, which is George Rex India, because he was the emperor. Um, and then this one has actually got a proof button. You can see it here. Um, they call it Star of David proof button. And then you've got acid etch decoration, so all that. And it's got a sloping quillion. Yeah. Um, Fish skin, and a twisted silver iron, and a domed pommel. There you go. So that is my old sword, although mine doesn't have a proof button, so it's got an untested blade, and the blade does have a crack in it, so it would never give it a proof. The other one is, I don't have an exact match to it, but 
the basket hill is like this one. In fact, it's exactly the same. Um, with the little round quillion, these two little um, bar, three bar hilt, it says. Yeah. Mine is dead straight. Okay, it's an artillery officer's one. Um, I'm not sure what this trooper. So, th yeah, so this is used um, for use on horseback, and that's why it's got a curve in it, so it's less likely to break when you hit someone actually as you're coming by on a horse. Uh, spear pointed blade, which mine has as well, because the end is sharp on both ends, but it's straight. And the handle, it doesn't have a pommel because you're doing it on horseback with this one. So you don't need the counterweight. You want all the weight out here because you're swinging it at people as, um, as you ride by. That's the idea of that one. So these horseback ones don't have pommels and they don't have skull breakers because the idea is that you also don't end up wrestling with somebody on the ground uh, and still trying to kill them with it. This one is a British rifle officer sword, blah, 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 Madras. The basket hill is a bit different, okay. Um, but the handle is like mine, with the same pommel as mine has. Same quillion. Um, the rest of the sword is different. But yeah, so this is 1827. And you've got infantry officers. This one's from 1860. Similar again, but again, this is... Um, not, not a um, a uh, artillery officer's sword, so it's got a bit of bending in. So you more like to be swinging this at people. This one, British in 1822. So this is closer to mine. This is much fancier. This plate here is fancier. Um, so I think this is what mine is based on in this 1822 pan. Spear pointed blade, straight. Basket hilt is a bit different, um, but the overall sword is, is very similar. It's a bit less bendy at the end here. Mine's a bit straighter, um, but with the same pommel look. So it's very close to this 1822 pattern, um, which is why I'm saying it's kind of probably as a pattern, it counts as a um, early 19th century pattern sword. So there you go i've upgraded my sword i'm going to get rid of that one i'm not sure how yet because um, you can't sell them on ebay but i'll work something out um yeah and yeah the price difference is i think i think i paid about it was over 20 years ago so i think i paid about 100 pounds for that one and i paid 400 for this i don't know what's happened with prices since then um it still looks cool, the other one. And you could actually hang it from a, from your belt or you could go and get your... These belts are called sand brown belts because they it has the belt that goes around your waist. But it also has a shoulder strap. So some of the weight of the, of the sword is actually on your shoulder as well as on the waist. So it doesn't slide down like braces. Yeah. So it doesn't slide down. And then you end up dragging your sword everywhere if it's sliding down if you don't have quite the right weight. So... There we go. Oh, I didn't say, but um, yeah, I bought the sword at, at this um, little antique centre here. It's called Aflick Bridge Antiques in um, Findon in Northamptonshire. So it's just north of Wellingborough. So I hope you enjoyed my little foray into something a bit different. Um, the world of swords is its own thing. I only know a little bit about that because I bought those swords and yeah I've got I went and bought the book after I bought the first one because I thought oh I bought this sword I better find out about it and it's its own thing um, yeah and there is another historical reason for me to have a sword yeah so uh, one of my ancestors fought in one of the last or I think it might have been the last official um, duel in Scotland and hence there is a book called uh, The Trial of James Stewart, the Younger of Dunern, because, um, yeah, he did actually kill the other guy. Um, so you never know when you might be called on. You know, I've got to stay in practice. Um, 
He did actually shoot the other guy though, so they were using pistols, pistols at dawn kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and he got off on the basis that he had um, no other recourse but to um, call the guy out because he'd um, publicly called him a coward and uh, wouldn't retract. So yeah, don't mess. Just in case you thought I was giving you some BS, you can buy The Trial of James Stewart Esquire, the Younger of Dunearn, before the High Court Judiciary at Edinburgh on Monday, the 10th of June, 1822. Taking a shot, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, Kindle version is 7 95 Paperback is 16 I've, I've had a go at reading it. It's very heavy going because it was written in Scotland in 1822. And um, yeah, quite a bit of it is not very English. Even um, the defamation bit which they quoted out is yeah really difficult to understand. But anyway, you can get it. It is a thing. It did happen. And um, I've got to upkeep the family honour if I get called out. Anyway, uh, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I will be doing another one from Findon on the glass that's in the antique centre there. And um, yeah, watch out for that one. I nearly forgot to say, please remember to like and subscribe um, and uh, please keep watching. Thank you. Good night.